I am so excited to share this story with you guys because um, when I got to, you know, when I really got to thinking about the story, it's now become one of my favorite, favorite, favorite stories, okay? It's the story of the prodigal son and we've heard it, I don't know, maybe, you know, I heard it like in Sunday school when I was like an itty bitty bitty little girl. So, um, but I never heard it told the way that I look at it now and so I just want to go ahead and just like put it out there. Okay, so a, a father has two sons and the younger son says to the father, you know what, daddy, I don't want to be here anymore. Um, I want to see what the world has for me. I want to see what the world, you know, can offer me, you know. So why don't you go ahead, um, split up your possession and give me my half and I'll just take off. You know, I just want to I just want to go on my own and see what the world has for me. Which is, which sounds like every young person. Like, I think we've all been in this place where it's just like, you know what? I want to know what the world has for me. I want to know what the world has to offer me. And so, you know what? Let me just go and explore what the world has to offer. We all go through it. Now, I thought it was particularly interesting because the father didn't argue with the son. He never said anything. He just went ahead and split it up. He split up his possession between the two sons. Um, the elder son doesn't really say much either in this point of the story. And so the young son, you know, like, he's like, okay, cool. This, I have my possession or whatever, deuces, I'm out. Boom. So he carries all his stuff or whatever, takes all his stuff or whatever. I'm thinking, okay, maybe he was more so interested in just the money aspect of it. So he takes off on this journey. Now, we all know when you are doing good in life and you have um, money, and you have all the possessions in your, you know, you have all these possessions and all these things that the world fancies, okay? Yeah, the world's fancies. Everybody is your friend. Everybody. Everybody wants to be your friend. You're the cool guy in town and you're, you're so cool. Everybody wants to be your friend. They're around you. You cannot get them to even leave you. You know, it happens all the time. And so he is just feeling on top of the world. Like he's literally feeling like right now, like I am the ish, you know? So anyways, pretty soon... He starts losing money. It happens. It's life. He starts losing money because he's not spending it wisely and he's buying drinks for everybody. I, I picture him as the guy in the bar that's like, rounds on me, you know, tabletops and all these things or whatever. And I'm talking about like the expensive parts. I'm talking about like celebrity status parties where it's like, okay, you know, $10,000 a bottle or $30,000 a bottle or whatever and he's buying for everybody, okay? Because that's the only way I can picture it for him to be able to spend that much money in such a short amount of time. So he finally gets to a place in his life where he doesn't have anything, nothing. So he has to get a job, okay? So he gets jobs. I picture him getting the first job and he gets fired because he doesn't know what he's doing. You're a rich kid. You've never worked a day in your life. You left your daddy's house all spoiled and stuff and you are a brat. You are spoiled, right? So... He goes to another job. Anyways, he ends up having the lowest grade job. The lowest of the lowest of the lowest. And he's supposed to be feeding pigs. Well, he's hungry. He's eating their food. He's so hungry. He's eating the food. Can you imagine? You are a rich boy's kid. Eating nastiness. Filth. It, disgusting. So that's what he was eating, right? So he decides. He's like, you know what? I'm sick of this. I'm not going to do this anymore or whatever. I'm going to just, I'm going to purpose in my heart right now. I'm going home. My dad has servants that don't even get treated like this. So I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home to my father and I'm going to apologize to him. I'm going to say, Father, I'm so sorry that I have wronged you. I'm so sorry that I went against you. Will you please forgive me? And even if you don't take me back as your son, please just take me back as a servant in your house. And so... He sets out on the journey and he's going to go back home. Now, the father sees him from a distance. And I just think this is so cool. The father sees him from a distance and runs up to him, just races. My son is back. My son is back. Like, and then he just hugs him. He hugs him, embraces him, starts kissing up on him. He's shedding tears. He's crying. My son is back. My son is back. My son is back. Now, if you're a parent... You can relate to this scene right here because when your children leave home, especially if this is the first time they've ever left home, you worry about everything about, like everything. 
Like, I, I have a four-year-old, and when she goes on sleepovers at her grandma's house, I text, I call, I'm calling to see what she's up to. And, and she'll say stuff like, I miss my family and all these things or whatever. And so that's just normal. Parents go through that. Now, I can imagine if he had like Verizon or Sprint, you know, if they had texting back in the day, I'm pretty sure the father would have texted his son, um, his dad. Um, no, the dad would have texted the son to kind of like, what, what, what's going on? How are you feeling? How are you doing? He would have called. He would have written a letter. But he didn't know where his son was. He didn't know nothing. For him to have seen his son afar off means that the father was constantly waiting for his son to come home. He was constantly looking. He's like, I pray my son comes back. I pray my son comes home one of these days. I'm looking for him. I'm going to wait until he does. So he was hoping that his son would come home. You know, and I just think that is so cool. So he's hugging his son or whatever. He puts his coat around his son and oh, that's just beautiful. It is beautiful scene right here. So he starts order, um, ordering the servants around. He's like, go out in the field and get the biggest cow so we can have some steak and we're going to have some party. And then he, he like, he's like, turn up the music. We're going to have it as loud as we can in this house today because my son is back. I thought my son was dead, but my son is back. And then he orders, I want dancers. He wants it big. Big, 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 my son is home. Let's celebrate, okay? I'm going to end the story there. Another time I'm going to take the story further because the older son, he just has a nasty attitude. And some of us believers are like the older son. So I'm going to talk about that in another video. But this video is about the celebration of coming back home. And why do I want to talk about this? God is for us, not against us, okay? And what does that mean? That father was exam he was an example of Papa God and God the Father, he God first of all cannot interfere with your free will, which is your choice. When you make a choice, he has no choice but to respect your choice. That's just how it is. And so the boy made a choice that he was gonna leave. The father didn't argue. He just divided his possession, gave his son the half, and then he left. But I always thought to myself, the audacity of this boy, this boy had some nerve because you only get an inheritance when someone dies. But this boy was saying to his father, you might as well be dead to me because you ain't dead yet, but I want, your, I want my inheritance now. I don't want to wait till later. Give it to me now. Oh my God, like it's just like it's just like the worst scene. It's like some of us have some really, really crappy attitude towards God sometimes when God hasn't done anything. And God doesn't argue with us. He just says, Okay, is that what you want to do? That's fine. Go ahead and do what you want to do. And so we go about our business and we go off into whatever we want to go off into. And we do whatever we want to go ahead and do. But the point is, whatever ditch you find yourself in, whatever circumstance or situation you find yourself in after you've made a decision to leave you can always have a mind change and come home why because papa god is just sitting there he is watching out he is waiting for you for that return he is just longing for you to come home he's not like okay i'm disowning you because you you did that and you did that and you did that you are a sinner no he is waiting for you to have that mind change that says, I'm going to go back to my father and I'm going to say, I have sinned and I've done you wrong. Please forgive me. 